Now, are we back on the air here? Yes, the first half. Then we can give the secret teachings after we get off the webcast. That's what we're yeah. <laughs> yes, and we can get into the juicy part. All right. <clears throat> so the main difference uh, here uh, in terms of Bon and the Buddha schools is that of uh, lineage. Looking back to uh, Tanatun Pashenra, but even in the Buddhist tradition, they talk about prehistoric Buddhas. There's a list of uh, seven Buddhas, beginning with uh, Vipassana. And then there's a list of 24 Buddhas, beginning with uh, Dipankara, all of whom pre preceded uh, uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. So, uh, in ancient times, before the Muslims uh, came into C C Central Asia, it was a continuous civilization from North India up to Pakistan, Afghanistan, into the uh, current re republics in C Central Asia. There were even Buddhist monasteries as far west as uh, Turkmenistan and uh, so on. And so there was an ancient civilization there. So this uh, suggests that, uh, yes, uh, the uh, Bompo teachings uh, did come from uh, Kazakh and Omolungring and so on uh, into uh, Tibet. In particular, uh, Namkai Norbu Rinpoche, when I was studying with him many, many years ago, he said there are two authentic lineages uh, for uh, Dzogchen, which was what I was particularly interested in. Uh, one coming up from uh, India in the 8th century to central Tibet with uh, Padmasambhava Vimala Mitra and the Tibetan translator uh, Vairochana. And uh, <coughs> the other coming uh, from the northwest from Zhangzhong into central uh, Tibet. Uh, and in particular, that means the uh, Zhangzhong Nyenju which is kama, or a continuous, uninterrupted uh, transmission of the teachings from at least the 8th century until the uh, present time. There are four uh, main schools of, or traditions of uh, Bampo uh, Dzogchen, and the uh, Zhangzhong Yenju is one that never became a, a terma, for the reason I explained before that the Tibetan king Tisong Desen promised uh, Jerpung Nanchalepo that he would never uh, suppress those uh, uh, teachings. And in fact, uh, they also entered into the uh, Nyingmapa tradition when uh, in the 11th century, uh, uh, Zurchenpo uh, went up uh, searching for Bumpo teachings and went to the Dangwa Lake and encountered a Bumpo uh, ma master there. And uh, uh, Shenchen uh, Latse, and uh, took transmissions from him and asked his permission, well, is it okay if I change a few names here and make them uh, Indian so that uh, the Buddhists will be happy with, with this? And he said, yes, it's okay. What's most important is the meaning of the uh, teachings. And so this section from the Zhangzhou Ninju then entered into the uh, Nyingmapa uh, tra tradition. In fact, there's many old texts uh, like the Kunchi Jalpo Tantra, for example, which are obviously Bumpo, but were uh, changed a little bit to make them into Buddhist texts. On the other hand, uh, the Buddhist scholars always accuse the Bumpos of uh, plagiarizing their text, changing a few words, such as cher, meaning uh, dharma, into ban, also meaning uh, dharma. But uh, now it's looking increasingly like it was mostly the other way, that old bumpo texts were uh, uh, rewritten slightly in order to make them into a Buddhist texts. Of course, I say this now, probably gets me in a lot of trouble. 
won't worry about this. Uh, so what is the uh, source of uh, the uh, transmission? The source is the uh, Adi Buddha, the primordial Buddha Kuntasangpo. Kuntasangpo in Sanskrit is Samantabhadra, but this is not the Bodhisattva Samantabhadra. This is the primordial Buddha. And in Tibetan, that's Kuntasangpo. The same name is used in both the uh, Nyingmapa and the Bampo uh, traditions. According to the Zhangzhung Nyenju, uh, from uh, Kuntasangpo, the teachings pass through uh, nine enlightened uh, masters. Uh, and this is known as the Dershahek uh, Gongju, uh, the transmission, uh, the mind transmission of the uh, Sugata. So Sugata or Dershahek means a Buddha. And uh, the first of these is the teacher in eternity. I don't have to give you all the Tibetan names because unless you know Tibetan, it doesn't matter. But the teacher in etern uh, uh, eternity is Kuntasangpo. So he is the source from Kuntasangpo. It is uh, he is the Dharmakaya, the ultimate aspect of Buddha enlightenment. From Kuntasangpo, it is transmitted to the Sambhogakaya, the body of uh, perfect uh, enjoyment. Uh, that that's the meaning of the Sanskrit name. In uh, the Nyingmapa system, this is Vajrasattva, Dor Dojisempa, but in Bon he's called uh, Shenla Urkar. Uh, Shen means Shen, Hla means uh, deity, Urkar means uh, white light. So the white light Shen uh, deity. Uh, when you do the uh, Ngundro from uh, the Zhangzhun Nenju, you visualize Shen La Urkar in the center of the tree. So maybe you've seen uh, pictures uh, of him. He's wearing uh, all the uh, rich uh, robes and jewelry of a, a Samboga Kaya. Uh, aspect. Whereas uh, Kuntasangpo is represented as a, uh, a naked teenager sitting in the sky, 16 years old, uh, because 16 in uh, Indian tradition is the ideal number. It means completeness four times uh, four. And so it's a symbol of uh, perfection. Uh, not that he's uh, literally a uh, teenager. He's shown as uh, being uh, blue, uh, not because he's cold sitting up there in the sky, <laughs> but because blue is the color of uh, uh, space, and uh, the uh, Dharmakaya is like space, like the sky. And he is shown as naked, not because he's an exhibitionist, but because uh, he is uh, devoid of all uh, discursive uh, thoughts, being the symbol of the nature of mind. So that's the reason for the iconography here. Uh, he may be uh, depicted uh, there, uh, sitting alone in the sky, or he may be depicted in Yabyum with his consort Kuntasangmo, who is the primordial uh, wisdom, these then represent the two aspects of Buddha in enlightenment. The female is wisdom, uh, the male is compassion and uh, sk skillful means. So in, in this tra tradition, uh, women are both intelligent and wise, a little different from our Christian tradition. <laughs> from the Sambhogakaya, it passes to the Nimranakaya, uh, uh, Shenrup Chempo, uh, the uh, celestial pre-existence of uh, Trungpa Shenrup. This is uh, the teacher who is an emanation. Uh, the uh, Sambhogakaya is called the teacher who is compassion. The Dharmakaya is a teacher in eternity. And the Nimanaka is a teacher who is an uh, uh, emanation. So therefore a, a tulku. Now from there it passes to, uh, the transmission passes uh, to the teacher who is intrinsic awareness. His name is uh, Tsema Erden. Uh, in, the, in, in the book here, there's the, the descriptions of all these uh, figures and so on, so you can look, look them up there. 
we can't get into it here. From him, it passes to the uh, to Trulshan Nangden, who is uh, the father of uh, Chechemitsupu, who is another uh, emanation of Trungpa Shenra. Uh, so, in a higher dimension of, of existence, then Trungpa Shenra emanates as this blue uh, cuckoo bird. Now, here in the West, cuckoos don't have much. Uh, uh, very high status, <laughs> often used for crazy people. But in Tibet, uh, uh, kujuk, meaning a cuckoo, uh, has very high status as a celestial bird who is the harbinger of spring, because you know spring is coming to Tibet when you first hear the cuckoo uh, on the horizon. And this is the barnang kujuk, uh, the blue cuckoo of the atmosphere. Barnang is the uh, atmosphere. And uh, he descended from heaven. Now, on top of Mount uh, 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 Meru, in the uh, center of our world, this is course all uh, symbolic, so you won't find Mount Meru at the North Pole, but that's where it's supposed to be. Uh, there is this uh, <laughs> evergreen valley, and in there is the crystal cave, and there's this uh, princess uh, Zangza Rinsen sitting there in meditation. And while she's meditating there, this uh, cuckoo de de descends onto her shoulder and then impregnates her. And we again get an immaculate conception. Now, in the old days, immaculate uh, conceptions were happening all the time. It was no big deal. Nowadays, they can't explain this, but it used to happen. So she gave birth to Chechemitsupu, who uh, looked a little strange, that he was kind of turquoise in color, and he had a nice top knot, which is a, a tsupu. And he's immortal, so he's Chime. This is the celestial pre-existence of uh, Tenpa uh, Shenra, through which the Tantric teachings and the Dzogchen teachings are uh, revealed originally. So this preceded uh, the more earthly events in Oma Lungring, uh, where we spoke about the 12 great uh, deeds. Now, in Tazik, in Central Asia at that time, there was a prince named uh, uh, Sangwa Dupa, and he was a very uh, good uh, me meditator. And in his meditation, he was able to ascend uh, into uh, heaven up on top of uh, uh, Mount Meru, where he met uh, Chimitsukpu and received the uh, transmissions uh, from uh, him for both uh, Dzogchen and uh, Tantra, and then uh, returned with them to uh, Earth and then went into uh, magical combat against the uh, Drekpa Poju. That means all the lineages of male e evil spirits who were oppressing humanity at that, at that time, and he was able to uh, subdue them. So he is then uh, listed as the last of these uh, nine enlightened beings, these Dershek. And uh, he transmitted then the uh, teachings to uh, three disciples who represented uh, three different races down here on earth. The first is uh, Hlaban uh, Yangsun Dakpa. Uh, he comes from the Deva race, uh, the race of uh, uh, gods. Uh, the second is uh, Luban Banam. Uh, he represents uh, the Nagas. Now, in the different re, uh, cultural traditions of the world. We have the celestial gods who are up there above in the sky and in the atmosphere. And then we have the uh, Kathonic or the deities of the underworld who connect with the earth and beneath the earth. It's not like in the Christian system where they're good, good and bad. It's rather different uh, uh, functions because the uh, kaphanic or underworld spirits, uh, here largely called Lu or Nagas, are connected with the uh, fertility and prosperity of the earth and uh, so on. 
The same uh, dualism existed in a ancient Greece. We had the uh, Olympic deities headed by Zeus uh, living on top in his palace on top of uh, M Mount Olympus. And uh, <coughs> the religious practices uh, connected with the Olympic, Olympian gods. You had the temple and out in front you had the altar and the offerings uh, involving a sacrifice of various animals was done during the daytime. And these were big public uh, f festivals. Uh, these were in the days before supermarkets and uh, butcher shops. So for poor people, this was a, uh, largely a s source of meat because there would be such a festival. The rich people would bring animals there, which were then uh, sacrificed. And then they were cooked on the altar. The bones and fat and skin were then offered to uh, the gods. But all the meat was then distributed to the participants in the uh, festival. When the Christians came along, they said, you people are offering sacrifices to demons. It's not allowed for us Christians to eat that contaminated meat. So butcher shops were invented by Christians. And since then, we've moved them into supermarkets. Uh, but there was also uh, the offerings made at night to the Catholic or underworld gods uh, down there with uh, Pluto and Persephone and so on. And uh, they controlled the wealth and riches of, of the earth, but also the prosperity of nature and so on. It's the same way with the Lu. Uh, they also uh, are water spirits, so they uh, can bring the timely rains and uh, so on, and are invoked for that purpose. So the transmission of both the Tantric and Dzogchen teachings then went to the Devas and the Nagas. Uh, the third individual was Mibhan Zampu. Uh, he was a prince in uh, uh, Tazik and a human being, and so it came to him. Now they are part of the uh, 24 uh, masters. This uh, represents uh, the transmission through Uh, 24 masters, all of whom are, are li listed in here. So we then have three kinds of transmissions. The first transmission is the De uh, Dershek Gongju. This is the transmission of the mind of uh, the Buddhas that went through these nine from Kunta Zangpo down to uh, Sangwadupa. Then from Sangwadupa, it was given to the Devas, Nagas, and humans. So here we have the uh, uh, Semba Daju, the uh, symbolic transmission of various beings. With the mind transmission, uh, there doesn't have to be any uh, word said because the transmission is telepathic immediately from mind to uh, mind. So we don't need a lot of talking like uh, I'm doing now. And so Kunta Zangpo did not need webcasts. <laughs> <in this way. laughs> then with the Daju, uh, uh, only a few symbols and gestures and so on was sufficient to communicate the teachings. There didn't have to be a lot of explanations in a book and so on. Then we come down uh, to the last of these 24 masters, uh, uh, Tsepong uh, Dawa Jaltsen, and he then transmitted this to two Nirmanakaya manifestations, uh, Taparitsa and uh, Jirpong Nangsha Lerpo, and then it passed through uh, many uh, the uh, six Mahasiddhas of Zhang Zhong and so on. This is the Uh, Druptop Nyanju, the oral tra transmission of the siddhas or uh, adepts. And that required a lot of talking, a lot of explanation. So, three kinds of uh, tra transmissions here that uh, descend to us. All right, now historically we come to the uh, 7th century and then the 8th century. 
and uh, we come to the historic uh, figure uh, Taparitza. Now, there is in my mind no doubt that he is a historical figure, just as Guru Padmasambhava was, that uh, he uh, lived in northern uh, Tibet, in the area to the east of Mount uh, Kailas. He belonged to the Rasang clan. His father was uh, Rasang Lujao, who was also a lama and taught him uh, uh, dharma or ban. But then he came into personal contact with his main teacher, Tsepung Dawa Jautsen, who is the last of these 24 masters all of whom attain the Jalu or the rainbow body. That is, at the time of death, they, uh, the master does a certain practice known as uh, Turgel, and through doing this, uh, he is able to uh, dissolve the elements of his body back into their pure state of radiant luminous light, the earth element into yellow light, uh, the water element into blue light, the fire element into red light, the air element into green light, and the mind element into uh, white light. And uh, so then their body becomes light and then finally uh, dissolves uh, into space. Now because it manifests as a rainbow, then it's called the Jalu, a uh, rainbow body. Uh, now, this phenomena cannot be explained in terms of contemporary physics, but this doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Uh, it doesn't mean that we now, uh, our, our Western scientists, know everything and understand everything in the universe. Uh, often they may think that and tell you that in the u university, but there are anomalies that are not explained by contemporary models of reality, and the rainbow body is one of them. But it is, the rainbow body is well testified. If you ever read Trungpa Rinpoche's uh, biography, Born in Tibet, uh, he talks about when he was escaping uh, Tibet, there was an, uh, an old man who was a carver of mani stones. It's a, a stone that has, uh, in Tibetan letters, O mani pay me hum, mani stone. And that uh, he was a Dzogchen pra practitioner, but people say, oh, he's just a, you know, regular guy, old man, you know, he's sitting there mumbling, oh, mani, pay me home, and gazing into the sky, and, and this the space spacing out. But then uh, he manifested uh, the rainbow body, which blew everybody's mind, including uh, the Chinese communists who were there and witnesses to this. And it happened when I was in early days in Darjeeling in 70, 1971, and so on. I met Lama Juta, who was his son. And so I heard this account from uh, eyewitnesses, too, not just from Trungpa Rinpoche's uh, book. Uh, Nam Kainorbu Rinpoche had a Dzogchen master named Ch Changchuk Dorje. And uh, at the end of his life, uh, he bid fa <coughs> farewell to his uh, dead disciples and went into a small... Uh, uh, wooden structure and had it sealed. Often they'll use it just a tent, but it depends on circum. He was he was in there. Well, uh, and then the rainbows began man manifesting. Usually, uh, the attaining of a rainbow body will take se seven days. And uh, so the local Chinese officials heard about about this, and they came there and they said. According to the teachings of Mao Zedong, this is not allowed. <laughs> Rainbow bodies are not allowed. So they had the police officers break into the cabin, and they found Chang Chang Chub Dorji had shrunk to this uh, size. Now, when you have a, a, a rainbow body, at the end of the process, the physical body has totally dissolved into space. All the material of the body has returned to its pure form as radiant energy, 
and then that energy uh, dissolves and dissipates into space. All that re remains are uh, hair, fingernails, toenails, and clothing. They remain because uh, consciousness, namshe, does not penetrate, or penetrate them. And so then the Chinese uh, come totally freaked out, uh, seeing this uh, yeah. miniature I image of Changpuk Dorje. They threw gasoline on it and that, and uh, burned the whole uh, stru structure down. Sometimes in the uh, past, uh, also for some reason or another, the process may be interrupted, and so a small uh, body uh, remains such as in Jarong, there's some uh, places there where there are some of these bodies preserved in, in stupas and so on. Uh, people like uh, Geshe Tenzing Wangja have seen them, and other people have uh, journeyed to that part of uh, uh, the Tibet. And more recently, about three years ago, when uh, the brother of one fr a friend of ours from Germany, he was... Uh, in uh, Western China, he was working on reforestation projects and uh, so on, and he got the local newspaper. And there was one Tibetan Lama who did Jalu in a temple there, and again, many people witnessed it. So this is an anomaly that does happen that can't be explained under uh, present scientific models, but it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So, uh, uh, this uh, uh, happened with uh, Taparitsa. When he was uh, 15 years old, he received the Dzogchen uh, transmissions from uh, Zepung Dawa Jaltsen. He then went into a, a nine-year retreat in a, uh, a cave called uh, uh, Taktap uh, Sengidrak, uh, the lion uh, cave, which is still there in uh, Tibet. And he uh, practiced Turgel. At the end of this, he realized uh, Jalu. Now, this is Jalu Poachempo. Normally, uh, Jalu, a rainbow body, is done at the time of death. If you do it at, at that time, you don't have to go through the bardo. It's a, a sign of uh, attaining enlightenment. But if you manage to do it while still alive, this is Poachempo, the great transfer. So, uh, Taparitsa is an example of uh, Poa Chempa. Now, uh, even though uh, such a master attains enlightenment, has uh, realized uh, the perfection of wisdom and all that, there is still great compassion for all sentient beings. And that compassion can manifest as tulpas or e e emanations. Now, the method of transmission so far is chikju, that is, and we're talking about Zochen here, that a master transmits the precepts of Zochen coming ultimately from Kunta Zangpo to one disciple uh, uh, alone. So uh, Dawa Jaltsen transmitted this to uh, uh, Taparitsa, then uh, Taparitsa during his lifetime, he didn't have a disciple. But in the next century, there is this uh, uh, there was this master, Jerpong Nangshir Lepo. Now, this title Jerpong uh, means literally in the Zhangzheng language, a teacher of Bon. In the Zhangzheng language, uh, the word for Bon is Jer. Uh, this was taken into uh, Tibet as uh, Jerpa, meaning uh, to chant, to to sing and to chant and so on. And pung, uh, pungpa uh, means a, a teacher. So jere, jere pung means a, a, a teacher of Bon. And Nangshir Lepo is his name. And he was a ngakpa or tantrika, uh, a, a specialist in the practice of the meditation deity Zhang Zhong Meri, and an expert with magical mess, missiles or so. And he was also a poor heat or a, a priest for Li Ligmicha, the last uh, king of uh, the Tibet. But as I said, he had retired and gone into retreat at this uh, cave, uh, the Deerface Cave, uh, next to the Darong Lake, 
In the book, we have a picture of that because John Belaitza was able to vi vi visit there. And uh, so Taparitza then uh, manifested to him. Now, uh, and once you attain the rainbow body, your compassion still has the capacity to manifest in vi visible form or uh, tulpa. So Taparitza manifested himself as a small boy. And he went to the tent of the local nomad chief. And, and this is, you know, nomad country. This was a wealthy chief. He had uh, herds of uh, goat, sheep, and yaks, and so on. He was quite wealthy. And uh, this uh, boy came to him and uh, asked for a job. He said he was an orphan, and uh, so on. So the nomad chief said, OK, uh, you can uh, watch my yaks, and, and so on. Uh, go go do that, and can also collect some firewood. And, and uh, this is a very arid country uh, up there in nor northern uh, Tibet, just south of uh, the Changtang. And uh, <clears throat> so he's doing doing that. Well, Nangshu uh, uh, Nangshu Lepo was meditating in the cave, and then the young boy collected some firewood, and he came down there and walked in, uh, around the bushes that were in front of the cave. And uh, the yogi looked up and said, uh, who are you? And they got into a con conversation. And the, this boy showed he was very intelligent. So he said, oh, well, you, you must have a teacher. Who is your teacher? And they got in, into this. And um, the boy uh, re replied uh, that uh, my teacher is the nature of mind and so on. And uh, his uh, remarks then irritated uh, the uh, yo yogi and said, you're a very arrogant uh, young, young boy. So tomorrow we will go into the presence of uh, the king who was in the uh, uh, Chungzong, the Garuda castle on the south end of the uh, Dara, uh, uh, Dangra Lake, which is the next lake uh, over. And we will have a debate. And... Uh, if uh, uh, you win the debate, I will put your, your foot on my head and become your disciple. But if uh, I win the debate, then the king will punish you. And uh, the boy said, oh, th this is ri ridiculous. You cannot uh, realize the nature of mind through debating and with conceptions and blah, 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 blah like that. And suddenly, uh, Jirpung realized this is not just a little boy. This is a Nirmanakaya. And when he realized that, uh, uh, Taparitsa transformed, and he appeared like this, like the Tanka behind me, uh, inside a tigle, or a rainbow sphere, a sphere of light uh, sitting in the uh, uh, sky. So we put that on the cover of the book. Uh, here's the uh, Darok Lake, and here's T Taparitsa uh, appearing inside a uh, tigle. And he's looking like Quintus Anpo, but he's white and uh, crystal and so on. But uh, again, uh, he's nude because uh, the nature of mind is devoid of d discursive thoughts and so on. It's all part of the uh, symbolism. At the same time, the uh, Nomad chieftain had also shown up. So then Taparitsa gave his first di discourse on Bon, on the meaning of uh, Dzogchen to Taparitsa and the uh, nomad chief. A few years later, Jirpong uh, Nantralipo was on this uh, island here. And then uh, Taparitsa again ma manifested to him in the, this form. and. Uh, then you have the second encounter, the third encounter, and the fourth in encounter. So then we have these four sections to uh, uh, the uh, Zhangzheng Nianzhu, from these uh, four uh, conversations or revelations <coughs> coming from uh, Taparitsa. The fourth, uh, well, <coughs> they deal with the view, the meditation, uh, the practice or conduct and the fruit. The fourth
fourth, dealing with the uh, fruit, is the subject of uh, the uh, new book, which I don't have copies of, of yet, The Precepts of the Dharmakai. These are the 21 little nails. Little nails means essential points. Because in those days, we didn't have photocopy machines, we didn't have iPads or cell phones, or all, all this. So if you had teachings in books, books are heavy, you know, to carry around. So a lot just had to be memorized. So you would use devices, memory devices like uh, uh, essential points, uh, zerbu, little nails, and so on, key points. And from that, if you remember them, then the rest of the teaching would uh, uh, follow from there. And so with the tw 21 li little nails means 21 key points in relation to the realization of uh, the nature, the natural state of the nature of mind, in particular in re relation to uh, the practice of uh, uh, Turgel. Now, you have three series of uh, Dzogchen teachings. You may be familiar with this from uh, Namka Norbu Rinpoche. Now, Dzogchen Sende, Dzogchen Longde, Dzogchen Manakide, or Upadesha. Uh, Dzogchen Semde means the uh, mind series of Dzogchen teachings. Now we have that both in uh, Nyingmapa and in Bon, and this is a more gradual e explanation, focusing very much how to find yourself in the uh, nat natural state of uh, Dzogchen, how to get there. Uh, Dzogchen Long day means the space series of uh, Zogchen teachings. So you uh, begin with gazing into uh, the sky and so on. And then uh, Zogchen Manaki day or Zogchen Upadesha. Upadesha means secret oral instruction, something that is not to be spoken uh, aloud, man ak. And uh, this assumes you already know how to get into Dzogchen, how to get into the natural state. It is like taking your child to the swimming pool and instead of having him gradually get in the water, putting one foot in, then another, and then holding him up, teaching him to move his arms and legs like this to swim, you just bring him to the edge of the pool and you push him in, he either sinks or swims. That's the way it is with so it assumes you know how to get into the natural state, but then the problem is how do you stay in it once you get there? Subject for this afternoon. Anyway, so uh, in uh, Dzogchen U U Upadesha, uh, that is Zhangju Ninju in the Bompo tra uh, tra tradition. So it's very direct teaching and uh, practice. Now in there, you have uh, three phases of uh, Rushan, Trechur, and Turgel. Now even though the two terms, Trechur and Turgel, are not used in these texts, the teachings are there. They just use different names for, for it. Now Rushan means to make a distinction. And this is Korde uh, Rushan Chewa. It means making a distinction between samsara and uh, nirvana. But here, samsara and nirvana, samsara means mind, and nirvana means the nature of mind. And these are various exercises where you discover this in your immediate uh, experience. Now we have these Rushans, both in uh, Nyingmapa and in um, Bampo. And then the next is called Trechur. Uh, Trechur means, uh, uh, Chur is to cut through, to cut something. And a Tekpa is a bundle of sticks around which you tie a rope. So you take a sharp knife and you cut that rope and the sticks all fall down like this. 
and the bundle of sticks symbolize all your rigidities and concepts about things, all your intentions and stress and all this. So it's cutting through all your rigidities, your emotional and your intellectual rigidities, including all your concepts about the nature of uh, reality. And this is the term for entering into the natural state of the nature of mind, the semi neluk. And uh, so that is the principal practice. The rushans are like a ngundro for Dzogchen. Once you go through that, you get a taste, you get a flavor for what is the state of Dzogchen or contemplation, yamjako or, or texture. But then you have to focus on that uh, texture and then eliminate all your wrong conceptions about the nature of mind. Because as long as you are thinking uh, about it, you're not in it. So if somebody tells you, I'm in the natural state most of the time, you know for sure they are not. Because they are thinking about it. They are in mind. They are not in the natural state. Now. The nature of mind, which you realize through the practice of treachery or the natural state, it has its own inherent energy. And that energy will manifest whether you like it or not. That energy can manifest as samsara, it can manifest as nirvana. And so when you are in contemplation in the natural state, then your energy, the wrong cell, the inherent energy of the nature of the mind, manifests as nangwa, as visions. And when you work with visions, then this is called uh, tergel. Tergel uh, means to leap over the top of something uh, instantaneously. Tergel do, as an adjective, means instantaneously. There's no separation there in uh, Time. So some people like to translate it as uh, leap over. I, I think it's much better just to use the uh, Tibetan word. English has a facility for taking outside words from other languages and making them into English words like Buddha, Dharma, Karma, Samsara. Well, we can do the same thing in uh, Dzogchen. So I then use uh, Trecher and uh, Turgyal. So I think uh, we've now come to uh, half past 12, so we have to break for uh, lunch, and then uh, we can uh, re resume uh, later. And how much time do we need for lunch? <laughs>